Hello, welcome to me holding myself accountable to continuing some series, reading some sequels, making some progress on the many series that I am in the middle of. I've had a scan through my bookshelves and there are a few sequels that I really would like to prioritise getting to soon. I don't want to put a deadline on this because I don't want to like terrify myself, but there are some sequels that I'm very excited to get to. Some of these I've spoken about more than others. <laughs> I thought if I made a list, a little bit of accountability, how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven of them. If I do like one a month, I can definitely get all of these finished this year. Famous last words. But yeah, a few sequels that I am really wanting to prioritise getting to. I've got a couple of middle grade, which is surprising for this list. But of course, mostly they are some of my adult fantasy ones. But these sequels will get read. I'm just gonna start off with the one that everyone knows is gonna be on here and should this month be being read and that is Legacy of Light by Matthew Ward. I don't want to hold on to this for too long, I don't want to talk about this for too long, but book three in the Legacy trilogy by Matthew Ward I've loved the first two so very much, it's become an absolute joke that I haven't read this and it is still sitting on my shelf, but this is the month I do it. If you haven't heard me talk about this one yet, then hi, welcome, you've probably never heard me speak at all, nice to meet ya. Um, but it, it's a joke that I haven't read this yet, you don't need to hear me talk about it again. It will get read. It's chunky, kinda scares me, it will get read. <laughs> The next one kind of has a similar story in that it's the third book in a trilogy. I read the first two back to back, absolutely loved them and just have not picked up the third one. Is there a trend here? Um, but that is Fury of a Demon by Brian Nasland. Um, the first one is Blood of an Exile and then Queen of something? Something of Queens? Sorcery of a Queen is the second one. Um, and this is the Dragons of Terror series about a dragon hunter that gets exiled and a queen who has sympathy for the dragons and the fact that they get hunted and a um, mad scientist of sorts who is doing some weird stuff. <laughs> um, it's, it's an interesting world, very fascinating, lots going on. Very interesting how they all tie together. Enjoyed book one, enjoyed book two, have not picked up book three at all. Knowing what happened in book two and like where we are and what we've learned about certain elements of this world and the powers that certain people have to influence other elements in this world and being vague because massive spoilers but like the politics of this world, very interesting to me. I love a political fantasy, but also the possibilities in this world with the scientific discovery, the magical discovery, the dragons, etc. I don't know why I haven't read this yet. I really should get to it at some point soon. I would like to get to it this year. I really should. So that one. Next up is The Endless Song by Joshua Philip Johnson. This is the second book to The Forever Sea. Yes, The Forever Sea is the first book. Um, and I read the first book in 24 hours, very quickly, flew through it. Fascinating world where the Forever Sea is like this grass sea and the ships that float on this grass sea are powered by... Um, a fire in the centre of the ship and the fire holds this power that needs to be sung to in order to like control it and control the ship. So there is like a singer in each of the ships that controls where they go and how deep they go in the sea. There was something very interesting in book one of this series where there is a storyteller that interrupts our main story. Our main story follows Kindred, who is one of these singers. They have a name, and I can't remember the name, but she is a, a 
a hearth singer. And whilst we're following her story, she starts off as an apprentice and then has to take control of a ship and so on. Um, her story is consistently interrupted by a storyteller, as if he is telling the story of Kindred, to a world that is not the world that we know from Kindred's story. And there's, like, hints that maybe Kindred's story is in the past and the storyteller's world is what the present of this world is, but by how much. It was very intriguing, and I definitely think we will get more answers to that storyteller element in this one, but that definitely intrigued me. Um, but the big mystery is no one, no one goes below the grass sea. It's not like a water sea, it's grass. And no one goes like below the forever sea to see what what is on the ground, what is at the bottom. So are we gonna find that out? Maybe. Is that what Kindred's destiny is in this story? Maybe. Is that what her endless song is if she has to sing a ship to the bottom? Maybe, I don't know. I'm very intrigued by this world and how Kindred's story got to the storyteller, and where that leads us. Another one that I really want to get to is Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan. but in order to get to Tyranny of Faith, I really should read The Justice of Kings again. It's been a while since I read Justice of Kings the first time, and I do think a lot of it has slipped my mind. Like, a lot of it. I know that our main character is like the apprentice to some sort of judge-like character who delivers justice, but honestly so much of it is just no longer in my brain, so I really do want to do a reread of The Justice of Kings to read The Tyranny of Faith, and I also recently picked up Trials of Empire, which is the third and final book in this trilogy, which is um, Empire of the Wolf, is the trilogy. But this series is very buzzwordy for me. You've got an empire in turmoil, there is a war, there is a rebellion, there's, there's uprising. Um, is the emperor dead? Because that's also a buzzword for me. No, the emperor is not dead, but people speak out against said emperor there is unrest. And um, as we know, a lot of those things are very buzzwordy for me. And then we have our main character who is a, a justice. That is literally what they're called. Things are starting to come back to me as I'm talking about it. Ooh, this one has a dark power. A dark power far more terrifying than they could have imagined. I feel like we're gonna get more fantastical, perhaps? Perhaps. Uh, but yeah, it's been a long while since I read the first one. I definitely want to do a reread, and I would kind of just like to read all three of them back to back, maybe. Maybe I could do that as some sort of little challenge to myself. Um, but now I've got the whole trilogy, I should really get on with that. And then another new addition to my shelf, but we do have Sunbringer by Hannah Kaner now that this is out and about in the world. These covers are just absolutely gorgeous. This is of course the sequel to God Killer, which was Hannah Kaner's debut, and I liked. I didn't love. I think it got three stars from me. Despite the fact that it got three stars, it's one that has somehow stuck with me. I think about it a lot, and when I look back on it, I remember enjoying it and enjoying the main character. Our main character is a, a god killer. She is a god hunter. Um, she has a personal issue with the gods and what the gods have meant for her family, um, which leads her to be in this position of god killer. There is a certain way about this world where god killers are necessary but not necessarily treated with much respect. Um, and a little god has attached itself to a little girl. And um, can a god killer kill that little god if it's also attached to a little human girl? Again, probably a lot that I am misremembering about this. Some of the bits I am remembering towards the end, obviously I don't want to say because spoilers. Um, some of the main character's background not gonna say because spoilers. But my main point was that God Killer I don't think was necessarily the strongest book and it definitely had some struggles. But it was also a debut 
and I have high hopes that because the premise of the plot is very interesting, this can only go uphill, I think. So I'm very much looking forward to reading Sunbringer, um, hopefully soon as well, so that more of God Killer does not slip my mind at all. That's a risk. Um, and yeah, these books are just gorgeous. So that one too. And then a couple of middle grades that I would like to get to this year as well. Um, the first one of those is The Winter House Mist... Yes, this is book three. Yes, correct. <laughs> The Winter House Mysteries by Ben Gerson, um, book three in the Winter House series. Winter House is about this hotel in this snowy landscape where mysteries seem to happen. Um, there is a mysterious history to the family that own and run this hotel, and our main character in the first one spends Christmas break at this hotel and gets herself all tangled up in these mysteries. They're really fun stories, like there are puzzles and stuff throughout it as well, it kind of like gets you involved. It's compelling, it's quick, it's fun, I love a snowy setting, and I love a middle grade mystery, so all aboard for that. And then the last one I'm gonna mention is Fear Ground uh, by Jennifer Killick. I'm, I'm hoping this is book two in the Dreadwood series. It is book two. Good, I've picked up the correct one. Uh, the first one was spooky, and I love a spooky middle grade. In spooky season, in the season of reading middle grade horror, which is pretty much what October is for me because I don't do adult horror because I don't really like horror, but for some reason I really like middle grade horror. In that season, I shall be reading this one. The first one follows this group of kids as they get a detention, they go to detention on a Saturday at the school and everything is not what it seems. There is a creepy whispering, people are going missing, there are some dodgy figures about, and a shitload of spiders. So if you're an arachnophobe, maybe avoid that one. Uh, but this one looks like a, a fairground. A fairground? So maybe clowny? I don't know. Do they get detention again? Do they just go to a circus or a fairground or something? Oh, super creepy clown masks. Sign me up. I'm there for it. And there we go. They're the sequels that I want to get to. Fingers crossed I can get to them soon. Some of these I remember books one of much clearer than others. Some of these I will need a reread for, some of these I will just be diving in, hopefully. So, fingers crossed that goes well. Hopefully this will help to hold me a little bit accountable for it, and whilst you're here, let's hold you accountable too. What sequel do you need to get to in 2024? If there's one sequel that you have to read this year, what is it? Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit while we run through these. I hope you have enjoyed. If you've read any of these and you really think I need to get to them like snappy, absolutely yes, prioritise that. Or if you're aware of any that I've missed that I definitely need to prioritise, let me know. But otherwise, I will see you in whatever comes next. Bye!